And so society believes in ideals and having you live up to ideals. The person who truly wants to get somewhere, that person should never, ever be looking in society. In society as it has developed today, a human being's natural impulses and desires are constrained within a tight framework of social acceptability. In the best case scenario, society serves as a mechanism for an individual to find safety within the numbers encompassed by the group and a place where one can find a sense of belonging by finding the spot where their abilities and natural proclivities allow them to integrate into the social mechanism. There is, however, a darker reality to be explored when one examines society at large, which is the truth that social integration as we know it today has a way of defanging its populace. In order to be considered a good citizen in most societies today, one must act in a way far removed from their inborn base human instincts and adopt a mask in order to avoid ostracization and ire from the masses. While it's objective reality that as time has passed we have become more civilized and safety within the confines of our societal shackles has increased, so have the rates of anxiety and depression in the general populace, congruent with the ever apparent truth that these masks and parts that we play are not without their toll on the human psyche. Holy Land, written by Koji Mori, is a meditation on trauma, the human being's desire for approval, the pursuit of strength, and the desire to find a place that you truly belong to find one's Holy Land. The protagonist of Holy Land, Kamashiro Yu, is the driving force behind the events of the plot, as well as a majority of the significant thematic elements within the story. The best way to sum up you in a single phrase would be that of a wolf in sheep's clothing. Not in the sense of him being a deceptive character hiding malicious intent from others, but rather that he is an individual harboring great strength that for a significant period of time is hidden not only from the world at large, but is unbeknownst to himself as well. Yu is an interesting case study not only due to the way that he develops as an individual throughout the narrative, but as proof of what relinquishing oneself to dispassionate societal norms and complete detachment from one's base instinct can create. Kamashiro is by all means an average individual outside of his tall, lanky form. Despite this, he is relentlessly bullied at school to the point that he drops out and becomes a shut-in. During this period of his life, you spend his days completely disconnected and sheltered from the brutal realities of the world in search of what he called a pure existence, an existence where he did not harm or interfere with anyone, and in return, no one interacted or interfered with him. His parents did not even argue with his choice instead comforting him and supporting him, asking him to continue to do his best. But Yu was intuitive enough to realize the reality behind these lies and label these words what they really were, a mask for disappointment and pity at what he had become. Yu saw these same looks in school with his peers as well as the school faculty and the adults that he encountered. It is important to note that Yu was likely experiencing a state of depression as a result of his bullying and subsequent isolation from the world. During this point in his life, he repeatedly states that he achieved a certain numbness and these feelings eventually reach their peak when an event that serves as Yu's psychological turning point occurs that we'll discuss shortly. When an individual is in a state of depression, they often project their inner reality on those they encounter in the external world. So the pitiable looks that you observe from others were likely a combination of both objective reactions from others as well as his own inner voice being mirrored to him by those he encountered. The turning point in Yu's psychology I referred to earlier happened when Yu, feeling he had reached an unbearable level of numbness, decides he wishes to take his own life and goes to the rooftop of a local building and prepares to jump off. What happened though, much to Yu's own shock, is that he finds himself unable to jump. Yu thought that he truly had nothing left to live for, that his life had become pointless. But something deeper than thought grabbed a hold of Yu at this point and would not let him proceed. This force was his biological natural instincts his own DNA's will to live that runs deeper into the root of what Kamashiro is than any thought that he ever had. This brush with his very mortality awakened something within you, which not even he realized at the time. His body knew something that you did not. You was a fighter, a struggler, and this event was the key to unlock the dormant quality in his genetic code. Human behavior and psychology is a complex thing, and the origins of what makes a person who and what they are, those forces being nature and the nurturing of an individual, are hotly debated. Common wisdom at the time of this writing holds that human beings are indeed not born blank slates. We are born with a certain set of proclivities and traits at our very birth that will determine who and what we become. But the thing that leads us all from living out our predetermined existence is our environment. The people we encounter, the places we go, and the things that we do all shape the human being that we turn into. While someone may have an inherent internal predisposition to become an alcoholic, if they are in an environment with strong supports where alcohol usage is not encouraged, they could potentially go their entire life with this genetic trait never activating and avoiding that struggle entirely. Science tells us the interactions between genes and environment shape human development. Despite the misconception that genes are set in stone, research shows that early experiences can determine how genes are turned on and off, and even whether some are expressed at all. 
the center of the developing child, Harvard University. One can think of our biology like a series of doors, with the environment being the key that unlocks these doors or influences them to remain closed. In this way, Kamoshido's brush with death caused a visceral change in him. Before this event, Kamoshido largely gave up the prospect of affecting his own life, allowing others to create his destiny for him and bending his existence in whatever direction they pleased. But on this day, you fought back, and his choice would teach him a lesson that would have deep ramifications on the rest of his life. After his decision on the rooftop, you decides that if he's going to go back to school and get punched in the face, he should at least learn how to make it hurt a little less. So he picks up a book on self-defense at the local library, which teaches the fundamental of boxing. At this point, Kamashiro is still convinced of his nature as a timid person, but without realizing it, the lessons he is learning from reading the boxing manual begin to seep its way into his muscles, and he finds himself relentlessly practicing the jab and straight combo found in the book without realizing it. It is often said that when one finds their calling, they are able to lose themselves fully in the endeavor, and without realizing it, they have spent hours on a task when they thought maybe only minutes had gone by. Kamashido finds himself entering this flow state and without realizing it, has become a competent striker through the sheer amount and diligence of the practice he commits to. This culminates in Kamashiro's return to school, where once again Yu finds himself being bullied by kids looking to give him a difficult time for his long absence. They are used to Yu being passive and taking whatever punishment they dish out, so they feel comfortable saying and doing whatever impulsive thought comes to their mind. One of the boys makes a harsh and careless comment about Yu trying to commit suicide due to how terrible his life is. Upon hearing this, Something in you has had enough, and he throws a jab at one of the boys, making his nose bleed. Kamashiro is subsequently beat up, but in his room at night, he cannot help but reflect on the fact that he threw that punch. For the first time in his life, he fought back. He reflects on the look of surprise horror the boy whom he punched carried, and while he would not admit it at first, that look satisfied you deeply, feeling like justice for the treatment he had endured for so long. This event and you winning a fight against a local thug in an arcade who was harassing him set off a series of events leading Kamashiro to being known as the Thug Hunter in the local streets. Kamashiro is absolutely terrified at the prospect of vengeance being enacted upon him by the groups whom he defended himself against. But after hearing a group of boys in his school describe the Thug Hunter as cool and someone to be admired, you experiences an emotion that completely eluded him up to that point in his life. You experiences pride, the pride that comes from the recognition and admiration of others towards someone they view as worthwhile or worthy of emulating. As someone who has spent the better part of their life with no real place to go, being looked down on at home, school, and the general community as someone either completely unexceptional or in the worst case, pitiable, hearing his nickname evoked as an ideal that others should strive to be gave you elation like little else could. Society taught you that he was weak. And you, like most have learned in societal discourse today, was taught that aggression is unacceptable and is not an emotion to be indulged in. But as Kamashiro experiences life outside of the safety of his room and reflects on his own experiences with bullying, he realizes the truth that violence is an unavoidable reality of the human condition. But there is a caveat to this. While aggression can most certainly be used to commit heinous acts, power also allows one the ability to defend the things that they hold dear. And as you comes of age, it is this balancing act that becomes pivotal to the individual he becomes. It is at this point in the narrative that Mori further explores the long-term impacts of trauma on an individual's mental health. Kamashiro's years of being bullied up to the point where he is learning to be competent in defending himself have burdened his psyche significantly. Entirely subconsciously, Yu has developed a victim complex. In nearly every scenario, seeing himself as the underdog and victim and those he fights as malicious bullies whose only goal is to cause harm. This complex reaches its zenith when Kamashiro's best friend, Shin, is made a target and viciously attacked by thugs attempting to lure Kamashiro out at night. After Shin is hospitalized, Yu goes on a thoughtless rampage of violence, going out at night and picking fights with anyone whom he views as a bad guy and deserving of punishment. This worldview is equivalent to that of a young boy, observing the world through the lens of good guys and bad guys is far too binary, as this filter completely disregards the subtleties, nuance, and shades of gray that underline nearly every human being's actions. This is an unfortunate side effect of how Yu's personal trauma has affected his worldview. When one is bullied their entire life, it is easy to develop the self-concept of a victim, living in existence where things only happen to you, instead of you expressing yourself and enforcing your own will. What is often not spoken of, however, is the dark side of this mindset. When one views themselves as a victim and the world as bad guys, it is easy to justify whatever atrocity one one wishes to commit, because the external world inevitably had it coming due to its poor treatment of you in the past. The individual can become just as bad if not worse than the very bullies that they felt ruined their life. Yu is eventually confronted with this fact by his friend and mentor, Izawa Masaki, who with one phrase plants the seed for a truth that will serve as a significant turning point in Kamashiro's personal maturation. Up to this point, Kamashiro viewed Masaki as an ideal to be aspired to. He was calm, powerful, decisive, everything he felt a man should be. Masaki and Yu understand one another on an 
intimate level almost immediately. They are both individuals who see themselves as having no place in traditional society, and both of them are individuals that feel most alive when surrounded in fighting and conflict. But as you begin to understand Masaki outside of the ideal he crafted, you notice his self-harm scars on Masaki's wrist, and is forced to recognize the reality that even those who seem flawless on the outside are ultimately still human. Masaki, seeing you walk a similar path of self-destruction that he himself went down in his younger years, exclaims to you the reality of his recent behaviors. In your world, you think you alone are sad, that you alone are the victim. There isn't a single person out there who isn't being hurt, not a single one. Simple but profound like the truth often is. With this single statement, Mori effectively encapsulated what is one of the most prevalent issues found in many modern cultures today. So many groups and communities identify themselves as the underdog. Their community is the one with the most profound problems. Their community is the most misunderstood. Their community is the one suffering the most. So blinded by their own neuroses, they fail to see the world at large and the reality that everyone is fighting a battle and that their actions may actually be contributing to the problems they claim to want to fix. Without realizing it, they have allowed their labeling of themselves as a victim to become an egoistic pursuit, where their problems and desires take precedence over those of the rest of the world and interactions between forces operating in this way can only lead to destruction. Through Masaki's guidance, you was able to mature and get out of the slump that he was in, meditating on what it is he really wants and what truly makes him happy. You come to the revelation that the power he had created in his fist is his God, the power that lets him protect what is most important and manifest his own will in the external world. Kamashiro has learned that salvation only comes through independent effort. No society, culture, or person outside of yourself can get you there. Yu's experiences with bullying and depression taught him that there is no lasting joy to be found in escapism. It only leads to numbness in the end. It is through dedicated work, life experiences, and allowing oneself to be vulnerable enough to experience true companionship that Yu discovers the sense of belonging is not about finding a specific place where one fits in, but rather creating that place for oneself. By not isolating oneself and choosing to experience the things that the world has to offer, both the positive and the negative, one puts themselves into the position of being able to find the people and pursuits that make life worth living. This is how the foundations of a home, one's holy land, is created.